You know, if you're going to be in private practice, one of the things you absolutely have to have is a good website. It is your front door and it is your face. It's what people go to first to find out about you and the services that you offer. And I would highly recommend that you check out the folks over at Brighter Vision to help you with that. Brighter Vision is the premier web design and branding uh, company for therapists. Uh, They'll not only help you build a beautiful custom website that represents who you are, but they provide unlimited support and also help with search engine optimization, SEO. And that's what you have to have in order to be found on the, on the internet. So go check them out today. Go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash brighter vision and use the coupon code Gordon and you can get your first month free. So check them out today, practiceoftherapy.com slash brighter vision. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 77 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer, and I'm so glad you've joined me to tune in to this episode of the podcast. If this is the first time for you to listen to the podcast, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. And I'm so glad you're letting me into your ears and into your life and uh, that you're following the podcast. Um, If you haven't done so already, be sure to take time to subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it, uh, whether it be on Apple Podcasts or iTunes or Stitcher, Spotify, any number of different podcatchers out there we're now available on. You know, when I started the podcast almost two years ago, it'll be two years in August of this year that I started the podcast. I had no idea that it would take off like it has. Um, You know, consistently now we're getting anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 downloads each month. Uh, There's been close to 30,000 downloads total of the podcast, which is just, I, I never knew that it would grow to this extent. And I did it not to try to see how fast I could grow, but just really wanting to share my own private practice journey. And then the the journey of other the journeys of other people. Like we've had some phenomenal guests on the podcast uh, so far. And I'm I'm constantly looking for uh, new podcast guests and people to interview that are uh, gonna be relevant to this uh whole realm of private practice and being therapists and being in in private practice. Um, there's just so much to learn, and I learn something new every time I talk to somebody new. But uh, in this episode, I'm going to do another solo episode and really talk about something that has come up again, just in what I hear from folks that are listening and emails that I get, and then just comments on our Facebook group and also on Facebook pages and that that sort of thing. We're also on Instagram now and um, uh, kudos to my uh, virtual assistant, Rachel. She has just really done a phenomenal job in helping uh, get more Instagram stories and out, out there and uh, put more content up on that platform. But um, anyway, I've been on social media, Twitter, um, Facebook, um, now Instagram, also LinkedIn, but did a little bit with Pinterest, but um, those are the main platforms that I've been involved in. And um, I think a lot of people have found the podcast through that as much as anything. But um, anyway, where was I going with this? I'm sorry, I'm just kind of scatterbrained. It's, uh, you know, th- my life has been just uh, kind of up and down here lately. I think I've shared in a previous episodes that my wife took a fall and she broke her ankle and had to have surgery on it. And it's just really changed our whole day-to-day schedule and routine. And then 
I had uh, a family member to pass away, an uncle, and um, he was in his 80s. And then going through that whole struggle of aging parents and having to move my dad into assisted living and all of that. So if I'm scatterbrained, it's um, it's because of that. I've just had my mind on a lot of things. But getting this podcast out every week, I'm trying my best. I know I've missed a few weeks here uh, lately, but trying to get the content out to you here lately um, is just uh, just something I've com- committed to doing. And so hopefully the information is is all helpful for you. But anyway, in this in this episode, one of the things I wanted to talk about um, was I get a lot of questions about um, making that transition from part time private practice into full time or even just moving from an agency setting type of thing or a full time job of some part of some of, of some type and then moving into private practice and what's that like and how do you make those decisions and what do you need to keep in mind and all of those things. So I thought I'd share some of those thoughts about that today in this episode. Um, but before we get to that, one of the things I'd want to um, mention is that, and this kind of ties in with what I'm talking about today, is um, the Money Matters and Private Practice course is out there and it's ready for you to start learning from. Um, still in that pre-launch phase, but the majority of the content is up there. I've still got a few more videos to record just when I can get clear the decks to get that done. But um, anyway, while it's in this pre-launch phase, you can still get the course for half price and you can just use the coupon code take 50 t-a-k-e five zero and um, it's only going to be only a few more weeks of this left because I've made the commitment to get all of this out there and we'll have the full course completed and up and ready and when that happens I'm no longer going to be in the pre-launch phase it'll be in the full launch phase and so you won't get it at half price. So take advantage of that while you can. And that way you'll have access to the course when it's all up there and um, be able to learn from it. But in the course, I'm just ta- uh, teach people about the financial side of private practice, which is such an integral part of what we do in order to be successful. Certainly, we've got the clinical side of things, and that's where most of us focus our time. But I know when I first went into private practice, I knew nothing about the financial side of it all and learned a lot of it kind of the hard way, but I've learned a lot from a lot of good people and experts. And so I've taken what I've learned about all of that and put it into this course. So the Money Matters and Private Practice course, you can find that at practiceoftherapy.com slash finance course and take advantage of that uh, half price deal. So so um, let's jump into talking about um making those transitions from part-time private practice into full-time and how to know when to do that and how to do that. You know, going into private practice, there's a lot of different avenues for that and a lot of different ways that people can approach that. Um, I've shared with some of you before on the podcast, just kind of my own journey in that um, I went to work for when I graduated from graduate school, I went to work for an agency and it was a nonprofit agency. It was a great place. Um, Have no regrets of working there. Um, But like most agencies, the work was very demanding and very hard and um, almost really kind of emotionally taxing in a way, particularly for us, the population that the agency I went to work for, we worked with at-risk children and youth and their and their families, and we did intensive in-home therapy. And so 
I started out as a therapist with them and were going into homes and uh, some really tough situations to deal with. And um, I kind of worked my ways uh, up pretty quickly up the ranks there at the agency uh, within a year or so after I started working there, I became a supervisor and started supervising a, a team of counselors and then uh, moved into becoming a clinical consultant. So really what I was doing at that point was overseeing just kind of the clinical side of things with the various teams that were seeing uh, seeing clients in the in-home program. And also I worked in foster care for a while within that same agency. But one of the things I figured out pretty quickly was uh, working for someone else really kind of limits the time that I wanted to spend in my own life. And so, you know, as you've heard from me over and over again, I think one of the places to start when thinking about going into private practice or even moving from part-time private practice into full-time is to really ask yourself why and have some clear understanding as to why you want to do that. For me, my why was is that uh, at that moment in my particular time in our life, my wife had um, been diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, fortunately, she's a long-term survivor of that. But also, my our daughter was entering high school, and she was going to be in the band, and I knew that she was going to be doing a, a lot of band trips and that sort of thing. And so I knew I wanted to be able to spend time on those things where I was needed most and really where my passion was, which was obviously spending time with my daughter and being part of her life and the things that she was doing, but also being able to have the time to attend to my wife and help her through that very difficult period of her life and going through what she went through with uh, the chemo and radiation, all that kind of fun, yucky stuff uh, that cancer, cancer survivors have to go through. Uh, but so that that was a big part of my why at the time. The other thing that um, the way things really kind of lined up for me in moving into private practice was um, a really kind of more full time. I had started my private practice, I guess, probably about five years prior. I was um, working at the agency and I thought, well, I'm going to start seeing some folks on the side to really just kind of bring in a little extra income, but also with having in the back of my mind that I knew that it was something I was eventually going to do full time. I know there are a lot of people out there that might be working for somebody else or working for an agency somewhere, and they start their private practices really to um, bring in some extra income with really no intention of really going into it full time, but they they figure out that it is something that they that can be done. Uh, I know I've heard stories from people just about, okay, I'm going to do my new private practice and see people on the side to pay off uh, student loans. And I think that is an excellent idea is to be able to use that extra income of uh, being in part-time private practice to kind of cover those things. But the question always comes up from people that listen to the podcast and just emails I get from people is that they realize, okay, private practice really is their passion and they're doing it part time while maybe working somewhere else and they want to make that move and make that transition. So let's talk a little bit about what it what it takes to move into full time private practice. Obviously, the first thing that all of us tend to think about is making sure that it's financially viable to to make that move. Um, you never really want to quit your your day job, so to speak, or your full time job, or really um, cut out uh, a steady stream of income with your regular job until you know that you've got a buffer in place. In other words, you've got money saved away to make you help you make that transition in my own in my own journey when I made the decision I started my private practice back in around 2005 and I I really did it in the context of starting a a counseling ministry at my church 
and um, was so I was seeing folks really kind of on on the weekends or in evenings and just it was really kind of sporadically at first but as the word started getting out about me and about um, being able to see people I had some friends that were doctors and nurse practitioners that were starting to refer to me and just word of mouth through the church and I really wasn't putting a whole lot of effort into marketing back then but things started to kind of pick up and um, I really thought okay I, I think I can make this fly if I really were to start to to market it and really kind of push uh be more active in developing referral sources. So that's what I did. And over the next um, several years, I guess two or three years, I started doing that. I started, I built a website and uh, that's a whole other story in and of itself. But once I got my website up, that's when things really started to kind of pick up. People were starting to find me. Uh, it turned out that I was one of the the few therapists in town that had an up-to-date website. And so people were finding me online and through my website and starting to call. And so I was uh, starting to see more and more clients part-time. Um, and as I said earlier, the, you know, kind of the way the stars aligned, uh, you know, my my daughter was making that transition into high school at the time. Uh, my wife's health issues and all of that. I really, real, I really started thinking seriously. Okay, what is it going to take for me to leave my agency job and focus on uh, doing the private practice exclusively? Well, part of my transition came about uh, because there was an opportunity for a uh, part-time job within my church context um, to be a coordinator for a, an organization called Episcopal Appalachian Ministries. And we, uh, at that particular time, we were dealing with just uh, poverty issues within the Appalachian region. And it was a, it was really a, a, um, a larger, uh, a larger, more regional job. In other words, it was in the context of the the National Episcopal Church. And so, um, anyway, I applied for that job, and um, it was a it was a part time job, a half time job, as they called it. And so they um, they hired me for that position. And so I knew that that salary from that particular position wasn't quite as much as what I was making working for the agency, but it was pretty close. And so fortunately for me, I was able to have a part-time job plus be able to do my practice part-time. So as time progressed, I realized that my practice was really growing and I really reached that, that point at which, okay, I've either got to get, I've got to give up one or the other. I've got either got to give up this, this Appalachian Ministries position, or I'm going to have to give up my private practice. Well, guess what? My pra my passion and my why is around private practice. So I really began to look at, okay, how can I phase myself out of this part-time job and do private practice more full-time? So what I began doing at that point is I made, um, first of all, is we really spent the time, our time as a family getting our finances in order at home. We realized that, we, like a lot of people, we had accumulated some debt and I really needed to look at what we needed to do to kind of get myself, get myself out of debt. Um, you know, my wife was still working full time at that time. And so, um, we were really looking at, okay, where I could transition over and be on her health plan um, and all those sort of things. But we really had to look at our personal finances and the lifestyle we wanted to keep and then look at what it would take for us, for me to make that transition. So we got, we crunched the numbers, realized that, okay, this part-time position was going to get, get us through. Um, and when I realized that I wanted to move out of that part-time position, I really set that goal to do that over a year's time. So the first thing that I did is I really just made sure that I could live 
for the next year solely off the um, the income from the part time position, without paying myself at all directly from my private practice stuff. So I then began to take the money that I normally would have paid myself from my private practice and began uh, putting it into savings. I opened a money market account, um, which is just a, for those of you that might not be familiar with that, is that a money market account uh, allows, gives you a little bit of interest, but also it, it limits the number of transactions that you can have. You can search for several of those online, but the, uh, I guess the main thing was, is I set it up so that I, it would, I'd have access to it, but it wouldn't be easily accessed. And so I made that commitment to just start saving what I would make from my private part, part-time private practice, just start saving, paying myself, but putting all that money into a, into a savings account. And so I did that over the next year, over the next year. And when it was all said and done, I had, um, about six months worth of my full salary, if I were to pay myself a full salary, plus my business expenses all saved away. And so that was the point at which I realized that, okay, I can really make the transition into being into full-time private practice. So I resigned from my part-time job and moved into full-time job gulp. (laughs) It was a scary time. I was, uh, even though I had that buffer in place and I knew that it would carry me through the short times, it was really that point at which I realized I really needed to up my game in my private practice as well. So that was also the point at which I decided to start a group practice so that I was not just, I was not totally dependent on just my income, but also the work of others. And so in the previous episode, I talked about that a little and just about being going, starting group practices and that kind of that process. But I I guess my point with all of this is to move from part-time private practice into full-time or even from uh, just working for an agency to starting a private practice the one big piece of advice I would give folks is just make sure that you you create a financial buffer for yourself. What you don't want to do is jump out of the frying pan into the fire, as we like to say here in the South, um, by just jumping in without having made some financial preparations. And so I think there's no there's no time limit to that. Uh, But I think if you can do it, give yourself time to do it over a period of time and have a plan for that is going to be um, real important. Um, And that's also where mindset comes in. I think one of the things that I think a lot of people happens for people is that they're working in jobs that where they find themselves just miserable and unfulfilled by their job. Um, whether it's working for an agency or working somewhere else, they get just really disenchanted with what they're doing and they get discouraged by that. And they get so discouraged that they just up and quit their job. Um, That's sometimes a good decision, but a lot of times it's not. And so one of the things that I think is important, and I look back at my own journey is, is that when I made the decision that I was going to, move into full-time private practice from part-time, I really got myself in the mindset of, oh, okay, I'm going to do the best job I can with my, with my part-time or my full-time job and, and really develop a good attitude about that so that I can work through that, through that period, through that transition and do a good job with it and not be miserable in the, in the meantime. I know I had, um, this is just a little side note here, but back when I was working for the agency, um, I was really getting very disenchanted with my job. And I remember having just a real frank conversation with my supervisor at the time. And, and she said in a very therapeutic and kind way, you know, Gordon, one of the reasons that you're miserable in, in your current job is that um, you don't have the right mindset and attitude about it. 
Um, yeah, there's lots of things that should be changed and things that can be, may, maybe could be changed, but for the most part, you need to accept w- where you are and what you're doing and develop the right attitude about that. And, you know, once I did that, um, things changed for me. I really knew that I was not going to be at that agency forever. And, but I started putting things into action in terms of building, starting the private practice, taking those first steps of starting the counseling ministry at my church and, and then having it grow from there. The other thing that I I think was important with my mindset was taking away from uh, giving myself permission not to have a sense of urgency about it. It was going to happen. I had made up my mind that it was going to happen, that I was going to move into private practice. But I said also to also had the mindset for myself that I'm going to give this whatever time time it needs for me to do it right and for me to make make that transition into into private practice. So I think that's an important piece to kind of remember is to have the right mindset about making those transitions. Um, It will happen if you make up your mind that you want to move into full time private practice. It will happen. Uh, But just take your time. Be meticulous and methodical about it. Save your money. Get your systems and processes in place develop your referral sources to make sure that you've got those steady referrals coming in. Uh, Make sure that you've got a great website so that people can find you and spend that time when you're doing it part-time to really build out those things, but also adopt the right mindset for your full-time job so that you can continue to do that and not put yourself under a lot of financial pressure. So um, the other things that I wanted to mention just about things to prioritize and thinking about moving from part time to full time, um, figure out how you're going to cover your benefits um, that you re- might be receiving from your full time job. So, for example, your health insurance or maybe your um, your um your retirement savings and those kinds of things are things that you need to have um, make plans for because you what you don't want to do is get yourself in a bind down the road uh, by not having have planned those things out. Um, it, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, the Money Matters course, I go over a lot of these things about just the financial side of private practice of really understanding how all this fits together. But when making that move from part-time to full-time, you really want to make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row and all of those things planned out and have put some thought into it. Uh, but the big thing is creating that financial buffer for yourself. I would say at a very minimum, two months worth of your salary plus the the your other expensive, uh, expenses saved away. More than that's even better but two months of that at at the very minimum. Like I said, I was able to, over a year's time, build a buffer for myself of six months of salary and also um, to cover uh, the cost of being in business and save that away. And so it took a lot of pressure off of me. Also, it what it does is creates that buffer for yourself on those uh, when you do need to take time off and you're not seeing clients or maybe you have those slow times in your practice, you've got the financial buffer in there in place. The other thing that I think is just so helpful in making that transition from part time to full time is really looking at how you can diversify your income streams. You know, also during that period when I was uh, really focusing on creating that financial buffer for myself is also the time at which I uh, decided to start a group practice and start bringing on other therapists to join me in my work. Um, And I talked a lot about that in the previous episode, episode number 76. But um, what that does is it also allows you to reap the benefit uh, benefits of other people's work. Um, So, uh, for example, this for me, I've had to take a lot of time off with my wife's health issues and also with my dad's health issues and all of that sort of thing. 
But what's good to know is that because I've got other people working with me, um, I don't, I'm not going to lose that. I'm going to obviously lose some money by not seeing my own clients, but I know that I've got that buffer in place and that also there's still income coming into the practice through the work of others. And also with the stuff that I'm doing here with the practice of therapy, it's starting to pick up and starting um, to really create some income for, um, you know, secondary income for myself within within my own practice, in the context of my practice. So hopefully this has been helpful information for you and just wanted to share with you a little more of my story and how I made that transition. Again, I think kind of the key points with this are create a financial buffer for yourself uh, before you make that jump into full-time private practice. Also, put a lot of work um, into your personal finances to get yourself out of debt so that you've got more, um, you know, when, when we get ourselves out of debt, that's really almost like uh, free money in a way uh, because you're no longer spending money on those things, on paying somebody else back, but you're able to take that money to to divert to other places. So create a financial buffer for yourself. Also, uh, focus on getting yourself out of debt and then creating multiple streams of income uh, will help you make that transition into full-time private practice with confidence and, and you'll feel good about it. Well, I hope this is giving you some ideas about things that so you can think about when making that transition from a part-time uh, private practice to a full-time, and also just even just thinking about making that transition from working for an agency or somebody else, how you can go about doing that. Um, it, as you, as I probably said already, is I, I think the big thing is to do it with purpose and intention and to, to plan it out. I mean, um, the, the biggest mistake most people make is they just kind of jump in and they don't really think about it long term and think about the long haul when making those transitions. But I think when you can make those transitions with some purpose and intent to them and just a lot of thoughtfulness, you can make that transition from uh, part time private practice to full time and do it without a lot of anxiety. And, and a big part of it, too, is in addition to creating that buffer, is just going into it with the right mindset, being able to put up with some discomfort around maybe the unpleasantness of working where you are now. Um, and, and being able to kind of stick it out until you're financially ready to make that move. So, again, I hope this has been good information for you and hope this has been a helpful episode for you. Um, I'm looking forward to next week. I'm so excited to have the one and only Melvin Varghese. Uh, for those of you that don't know about Melvin, he's the guy behind Selling the Couch podcast, which has been around for a while. And he's also one of the people that inspired me to start this podcast. And so uh, I've, uh, been thrilled to get to know Melvin here recently and um, we, he and I just kind of hit it off and um, he, he and I think a lot alike and so uh, I'm happy to have Melvin join me next week in episode number 78 um, uh, of the podcast so tune in next week for to get to hear Melvin and our conversation um, also if you'll remember to take a look at our sponsor for this episode brighter visions uh, you can go check them out at uh, practice of therapy.com slash brighter vision um, they are going to be going to be doing some more stuff with brighter vision and Perry Rosenblum and his team uh, here in the future uh, uh, they've got a new product coming out and um, um, we'll, you'll get to hear more about that um, here soon uh, so brighter vision they're the people that are the absolute experts behind website design 
and um, branding for private practices. Um, they, they do a wonderful job. And uh, like I said in the intro, if you don't have a good website, it's going to be difficult for people to find you. So check them out today. Also, as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, uh, do take the time to subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it, whether it be on Apple iTunes or on um, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Google Play, uh, Intune Radio, uh, iHeart Radio, and also on Amazon. So um, check it out. Um, we've got uh, Amazon Echo. You can get the podcast there now. So Woo. Great episode, folks. I hope you enjoyed all this. And uh, thanks for joining me and tune in again. And thanks for joining me. See ya. You have been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. Please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information, resources, and tools to help you in starting, building, and growing your private practice. And if you haven't done so already, please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com. The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.